This is the game. You're going to laugh. I I was thinking how to title this game and I could not really come up with anything better than geometrical improbability. It just drives you nuts, right? If you're looking for geometrical improbability, if you're looking for complete weirdness in chess, you gotta play, gotta play the Dutch Leningrad. So I'm playing against Henry Lockdelman. I don't know him. Uh, he is a young guy, about 20 years old. A feed master, 2300 something. Well, I have several continuations, but you know, it was pretty funny that I didn't expect I'm gonna play against Henry because we are supposed to um, meet against the best players from Team Maticula. And the best player who was present in the playing hall was um, Toivo Keinanen. Young guy who is about 19, 20 years old, maybe 21, I, I, I don't really know. Young talent, he's very good in uh, bullet playing in line. But he was present in the hall. And guess what? He didn't play. So that was pretty weird. Uh, and in the end, I learned the uh, truth that they had prepared that we are going to have another legionnaire coming from Latvia, Nikita Meshkov. He is going to be playing for us. And he was not here. And he was not ready to play against me. And that's why he decided simply not to play at all. <laughs> okay, that was so weird. Anyway. So he plays d4. Hello, Sledgehammer. He plays d4. I play the Dutch defense. Bishop g5. Which is a very interesting line from the Dutch defense. Mainly the point is after knight f6, white just wants to take it. I play some positional chess, right? And the question is, what on earth is black doing here? Uh, there's some very funny lines. For example, you can play h6, you can play g5, and after bishop g3, just don't play f4. This is a known trap. <laughs> That's a main threat h5 insisting to win a piece just to give you like a heads up of the oddities which are about to come okay this is just bad right because bishop e2 and black can just resign you can't do this but actually this line is pretty playable of the knight f6 e3 d6 h4 rook g8 is a move g4 is a move i have played it many many years but lately I become quite fond of the move g6. And now the idea is that I just want to ignore the bishop. I want to play bishop g7 and then play knight f6. So that I can recapture the bishop. Makes sense? He plays h4. He tries to punish me immediately. And I guess the point also is that if I play h6 immediately, bishop f4, I need to watch out for i'm not sure at which moment but at some point there's this idea queen of three queen g3 and suddenly my pawn on g6 is becoming a quite a prime target so i decide to play bishop g7 first so that after h5 h6 i have g5 and bishop e5 leaves nowhere because i have knight f6 and d6 and it was quite funny actually that Exactly this line appeared in one of my teammates' games in the final round. Which is just bad for white. I mean, black has secured the king side and controls a great deal of the central square. So, he plays knight c3, which is a good move. I mean, he wants to play queen d2, long castle, f3, e4, whatever. Uh, now apparently I have to play h6, and now you're gonna get your fair share of weirdness. Check this out. If you think you know something about chess, wait. So after bishop f4, knight f6, the only way a white can punish black is playing queen d3. Unknown castle. Makes sense, right? So we play d6. Queen g3 and just sacrifice the pawn. With me so far? 
So I want to play either King H7 or maybe Knight H5. White takes it. I play Knight G4. Now the question is how you are going to defend against Rook F6, Bishop E6, and Bishop F7 threat. For example, F3, here, here. White casually plays E4. Do you understand this move? I don't. I mean, just I'm just showing you analysis. Here. What? I mean, I guess uh, Bishop C4, take it at 5, this knight is trapped. So, E6. <laughs> Bishop E6, okay. Do you like that? Okay, and then black wins. Okay, this is maybe uh, the most normal line of this game. And black wins. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go back here. Because white is not going to play f3. White is going to play, obviously, bishop g5. With me so far? So what's the point of g5? Yeah, I guess h takes on g5 is bad. Because it's just bad. Although there's no threats, by the way. Okay, this line is pretty cute. But uh, instead of rook f7, I could play e6, e4, here, take it. Just play positional chess and white is winning. I mean, okay, I can understand it, right? This queen h7 threat is a big threat. So yeah, bishop g5, I play queen e8. Trade, trade. And there's a, another easy move, f3. And somehow this leads... Why the slot the better? Okay, I mean... I, when, I, when I saw this, I was like... Okay, what is this? Okay, what what I'm looking at? So this knight of 6 is pretty interesting. Uh, meaning this is, according to the engine, the best line. Wait, 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 wait for the lines, please. You're gonna get more. So I play d6. Now my idea is that um, I am I want to play h6 and push e5. For example, let's say I thought he has to play e4. h6, he plays bishop e3, takes, takes. And uh, I guess I'm slightly worse. Maybe. But there's a lot of dynamics. And now he plays knight f3, which is a positional mistake. Why? Because now he doesn't have access to this queen g3, which I knew. And now I play h6. And he was afraid to play bishop f4. But you're going to love the reason. I thought the same. He thought the same. I thought I can play knight e7. He plays e4. I play e5. So I was calculating this. Takes, takes. Bishop h2. Now what? I need to close this bishop. I play a 4. G3. Okay, F takes, bishop G3 is not very clear. I'm thinking, okay, G5 looks fine. Engine says, Rook G1. White wins. <laughs> you like that? You know, I, I was looking at this and I was like, Okay. Rook G1. Yeah, yeah, GG. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, yeah, the light squares obviously are pretty, pretty weak. But I was like, I was seriously considering this. I tell you honestly, I'm, I'm not sure if I would play this, because I, I also can play just knight of six. But this is the reason why he didn't go here. He was afraid of knight e seven e five, and the bishop is stuck on h two, and that's why he played bishop d two. And I felt, listen, this is not right. Right now, I can play knight of six, e3, and I can pursue the same idea of e5. So I briefly looked at knight c6, which engine really loves. Uh, wasn't very obvious to me why this is so great. 
E6. And apparently there's a very nice attack. Knight C4, sacrifice the pawn. Queen E7, Bishop E6. Uh, the, the long castle actually is backfiring. Now that white cannot castle the short way. Bishop E6 looks like a monster. I mean, I also kept a valid, to be honest, after Knight C6, D5. Knight B4, Bishop C4. But okay, I guess this is just better. As I'm winning the fight for the center. I think so. I'm not sure, really. Okay, I mean, I decided to play Knight E7, which looked more human. Um... Yeah, I could play knight b8 after d5 as well, but knight b4 is stronger. So he played bishop c4. Oh yeah, by the way, an engine says, engine says h5, g5, bishop d3 is very good. But I, I did not really understand why this should be good. Because normally this type of position black is incredibly happy about. To fix the king side with h5, g5 and just play short castle. Okay. He play bishop c4. Um, I play c6. Yeah, engine likes knight e4. Really? Because after takes, takes, this knight has nowhere to go. And I just move the other knight of 6. And I guess I'm just simply better. Because white has... Uh, if you look at this position more carefully, white has no pawn play in the center. These pawns, they're not moving anywhere. He's stuck. But okay, I mean, I, I did play c6, which is a normal, generic-looking move. Knight e2 was a great move. Okay. Okay, watch this. Here we go. So, <laughs> how do you stop knight e4? Let the weirdness start. I was briefly looking at knight e4. I mean, the point is, I control the square. Knight e4. Knight e8. How does what defend against e5 threat? It seems it's over, right? Wait. How do you stop knight g6 and queen h5? Okay, I mean, maybe it's not very difficult. You play e5, right? <laughs> okay, I was looking at this. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, knight h5, sure. So, you cannot really take it, right? Queen h5, king d7, long castle. Okay, I mean, this looks really bad. Uh, knight f2, bishop a5 check. Knight e1, queen d1. Okay, I got that. Yeah, you can't do this. Okay, knight h5 is nice, right? You just play bishop f6, and uh, then you just secure some advantage. But okay, I mean, even looking in this direction, like knight g1 and knight h5 is just, just ridiculous. Okay, but to be honest, I wasn't really looking at this. I discovered this in a post-mortem analysis, and I felt that e5 is the right move. Okay. After e5, I guess he has to take. And uh, I decide to take with a pawn, uh, so that I have a better control of the central squares. And 95, I'm not so sure. Because if I include this trade, I guess I'm happy because this bishop is not active. But after bishop b3, the threat is still knight f4. I don't know what to make of this. Knight e4, knight f4, queen f6, h5. You get it, right? I mean, this is pretty difficult to valid from afar. Takes, takes. Knight g6, queen b2, rook b1, knight c3, rook b2, knight e1. So, okay, it's a pretty weird line, which ends with God knows what. Yeah, about here, I decided to stop analyzing. It just... I don't know what I'm looking at. What is this? So, this this, this 95... Uh, okay, not very clear. So, I take with the pawn. And uh, I think I'm I'm, I'm going to play now. Queen e7, knight b6, uh, knight e5, bishop e6. I'm doing great. He plays h5. Here we go. I'm thinking. 
Okay. I don't want to take, right? But what happens after g5? He plays bishop e6, attacks the pawn on f5, you know... I have to sacrifice a pawn. Like knight c5 or knight b6, I don't know. Takes, takes, knight e5. Okay, what is this position? Queen e6, knight g6. Knight e4 is next. Long castle. Probably he cannot take on h8 because there's knight e4, rook takes on d2 threat. For example, let's say here, here. Ah, yeah, sorry, the other knight. I want a queen. Okay, I mean, this this I got that, right? Maybe not very difficult. After show castle, there's knight g4. Okay, I mean, maybe it makes sense, right? So after knight g4, there's knight e4 threat. You couldn't take on h8. So knight e4 takes, takes here. You just sacrifice the rook. Knight e4, something on d2. Knight g6, queen d6, bishop f4. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm even looking at here. But in the end, it's just a draw. Okay, it's just a draw. Uh, so this, uh, I, I didn't see like even 10% of this. I was briefly looking at this G5 bishop e6 idea and I realized I don't like it. So I took with the knight. I felt it stinks. Something is not right. But then again, I was not really happy to play G5. Now wait for this. Now white has a lot of moves. I was only looking at knight h4. Queen f6. And I felt I'm fine. But Engine thinks this game is not yet done. So Engine suggests to play knight c3. Now knight c3 idea is to play knight g6, queen g6, and queen h5. And that's why I gain space with b5, knight c5, b4, you name it. Makes sense, right? Okay, what the earth is this? You know, when I was when I was looking at the analysis, I couldn't even understand what I'm looking at. Okay, e4, what? Take it, take it. So, what's the point? Castle. The knight is hanging. Should be great, right? Okay, bishop page 6. Draw. Queen h7, king f7, queen g6. I cannot go to e7 because I get in trouble. Okay. Yeah, noted. Noted. Um, of course, I saw all of this. But wait for this. You're going to love this. No, this is the best part. I'm thinking... Can he take on h5? Well, obviously, g takes on h5 is a mistake. Why? Because there's knight g3. Wait, you might not understand it yet, but the big threat is knight e5 and queen h5. So knight f6, I guess, is just bad because of whatever. Knight e5, I don't know, my position is just very bad. So I'm looking at knight b6. 95 and everything that you need to know about this position that if black's best move here is queen d2 then things are really really bad so queen d2 is according to the engine absolutely the best move and black resigns a couple of moves later right because i mean here after 95 is just um lights out that's it immediately checkmate on h5 i mean you can't take it Okay, I kind of saw it. And after rook h5, I was thinking, okay, listen, I'm going to play knight b6. Meaning you, you can play double exclamation mark moves. I also can play knight b6. And uh, pretty sure he's going to keep his bishop. He's going to play bishop b3. 
And now G next and H5 is still bad. Because he plays Knight G3. I play Rook of Fate. And although I managed to rearrange my pieces, there's a very annoying Bishop B4. That's why. We are going to play A5. <laughs> so the Rook on H5 is still standing, right? I mean, nobody's taking it. I know the point is, if white takes a3, now I take on h5, the same line, rook f8, knight h5, bishop h8, and as you can see, there is still bishop b4. And black is suddenly much better because of this bishop b4. With me so far? But do you think that white defends against a4? No, sir. <laughs> he plays bishop c3. So, white just ignores the threat of uh, both g takes on h5, uh, both a4, and now I guess I just take the rook finally. Take it. Take. Here. And the position is just unclear, right? 9g6 is a threat to win the rook. I go here. Here. I'm not even sure what is threatening. No, 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 this is analysis. 97, knight c4, 96, 96 threats. In the end, let's just say this is a draw. A draw, yeah? Okay. A very easy line, of course. So here, 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 a5, bishop c3, etc. Uh, pretty, pretty insane. So, I mean, let's say none of this happen. And after h5, knight h5, you play bishop c3. And uh, now I realize that I'm in trouble because um, I have to play queen e7. Uh, he might still play uh, same stuff with the rook takes on h5. He might play knight f4 at some point. So I enter this line. There's nothing better. Queen e7, knight h4, knight f8, knight g6, knight g6, rook h5, bishop e6. And I'm feeling quite optimistic, you know? Because we're going to trade the bishops. Queen e6, short castle. His king is still stuck in the center. I think, listen, I can still win this. Engine says there's knight g3. The point is, obviously, I cannot take it. That's a very cute fork okay i mean you can notice that but the big, but the big point is after knight g3 should castle white first place queen e2 and because of this threat i'm losing a very critical tempo i have to play b5 takes takes and whatever bishop b4 queen d3 and white is seriously pressing so this was pretty nice he didn't find it he played bishop e6 like a normal human being I took it, 9g3, castle. Now, in case you're wondering how to play better chess, how to improve, there's one move strictly in this position, which secures solid advantage for white. Can you find it? I bet you can't, because it's not queen e2. What? Rook h3, I mean, strictly rook h3, I mean, don't ask me why. Uh, I guess the idea is uh, to secure the h5 square for the knight. Yeah, f4, knight h5, takes, and rook e3, there's the idea. Okay, fine. He didn't find it. Guess what? He played queen e2, and now I felt I have to get rid of this knight by playing a 4 A4, knight e4, and uh, as much as I wanted to play f takes on e3, Knight f4, queen g4 with some mate ideas, fork ideas, and then I see I saw nothing. Okay. So I decided to play first rook d8. He played bishop b4. Attack my rook. I play rook f7. And knight c5. Okay. And now I switch off, of course, in the game analysis after the game, the engine. Engine says you play queen e7. 
Why? After knight e3, white wants to play e4, f3, which is very human. Apparently, you have to play c5. Bishop c5? And now you go back. <laughs> no, you just give up a pawn just like that, and it's great. Uh, I don't know why even. Uh, I guess the point is e4, f3, takes... And at some point, rook d3 idea. And then knight f4. I don't know. Um, I mean, this is insane. So I was not even looking in this direction. And uh, yeah, and then engine finds something like queen c6, e4, f3, takes, rook d3, queen c5, and black wins. Okay. Fine. I was not, I was not looking in that direction. I play queen c8. Rook d1 makes sense. Now, I thought I was pretty smart. I play f takes on e3. And my idea was that after f takes on e3, I'm going to play rook f8. You know, I'm threatening with some tricks like check, take, and queen g4, right? You see, there's rook under attack. The knight is under attack. This is under attack. Check. King h7 is unfortunately lights out. But king f7... Uh, here, take it, knight f4, somehow win. Okay. Alright, I mean, fine. All of this looks very human, of course. But uh, after rook f8, he just plays rook h1. And... This was my best chance I was hoping for. But engine says all of this is terrible. That rook f8 is not a good idea. And also my opponent, after the game, said he did not play f takes on e3 because of rook d to f8. He also said, said it feels quite dangerous. So he took on d8. I took it. He has to take with a pawn to take care of the knight f4 threat. a5. Um, yeah, bishop a3 makes sense because bishop c3, now I suddenly am threatening to win a pawn. takes although engine says chill it's pretty equal bishop a3 b5 and um yeah what was it here yeah engine again strictly says c3 is the best move e4 give up the e5 square for the knight yeah okay this is i'm not sure who thinks like this e4 takes first you play b4 to stop bishop d6 and only then you play knight e5 knight f2 queen d5 black wins do you like that uh it's pretty cool right i mean i didn't see none of these things so the bishop on a3 is not playing rook f2 is a killing move Nadi tree is a killing move. Rookie five already is the best here. So, this was the best. He played b3. And I'm looking at either queen of eight or queen d6. And I cannot decide. I'm looking at queen of eight. And the point is, I want to play b4. And I'm creating the spin. But somehow I convinced myself. After b4, he is going to have a knight e6. And this is why I decided, okay, I'm going to play queen d6 first. Because now, after b4, there's no knight e6. So, he plays queen d3, which is apparently a big mistake. The best move is queen g4, which he was afraid, and I thought I should be doing great after queen f6. And Engine says, no, it's chill. You play knight e4. Check. King d2, there's nothing. b4, queen g6, there's nothing. Check, knight e6, there's nothing. You know, I was looking at this position from afar, and I felt that maybe I'm very close to winning. But then again, <laughs> I don't see a killing blow. So I was thinking something like queen of 8, but there's queen e6, I just lose the rook, just like that. And it's just a draw. Queen of 2 queen of 1 queen of 2 queen of 1 
So he could actually do this. Instead, he played queen d3, which I blundered because my knight on g6 is under attack. And still I was able to pull up and find queen of a. So if he takes on g6, check, check, check. And that's it. So king b2 is a mate. King d3 is a mate. King e4 is queen d5. And king c3 is e4. So he loses the queen. So he has to give away, give away the queen. This I saw. And also the same is after king d3. Check here. I just win a queen on g6. Okay, that, that was pretty cute. Uh, he played b4. And uh, now I was able to find another exclamation mark move. Double exclamation mark. How many, of, how many of them did we have during this game? I already lost my count. I know the point is he can't really take it. Check here. It's a mate. He took with the knight, and now I missed my opportunity. I should have played knight e5. Another double exclamation mark. The threat is knight c4. If he plays queen d6, I give a very obvious check. Right? I mean, you cannot take on f2, the queen on d6 is under attack. And now, this is winning apparently for black. Would you believe this? You just take, take, and play 9g4. And I'm down a pawn, but I'm winning this position. I mean, my pawn a5 is under attack, but apparently there is a mate threat. Knight e3, rook g2, bishop c3 is a mate threat. And black just wins. How obvious is this? Uh, okay, I was not even looking there. So if he does something else like queen e2, knight c4... Boom. Boom. And I win. Okay. I didn't see this, but I have an excuse. I saw 8 takes on b4, which I was very happy about. Because his only move is here. I play knight e5. I play knight c4. And it felt okay. This is very close to winning. So what is the most obvious move here for white? What you can think of. It looks very human, right? I mean, you're protecting the first square, etc. So after rook h1, can you understand why it's the best to play? <laughs> rook h4. You know, wait, you, you still don't understand it. And neither did I after the game. The point is that after rook h1, I have b3. <laughs> okay, what's the idea even? After b3, take it, check, here. Okay, probably you already got the point. You can't take with the queen. The knight on e4 is under attack. And out of knight e2, there's another threat. Takes, and here. So what is it all about this rook h4? Why rook h4? The point is, b3 now is a mistake. That's why. With me so far? You know, I'm... When I'm looking at this, I realize uh, I don't understand nothing of chess. So, in the end, I played queen e8. Uh, it was a time trouble. I played queen e5. Uh, with the idea that I'm going to play queen a1 and try to take here. And after rook h6, I felt that this is a win because I had planned that he is going to blunder <laughs> king d1 I'm going to sacrifice my queen check and give a mate so this was my plan there is one drawback of the plan he gives a perpetual check check here check and uh, initially when I repeated this position a couple of times I felt I can play rook g7. And I thought I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, not here. Where was this? Rook, yeah, here, rook g7. And I thought that after knight f6, I have queen f6. And after rook f6, I have rook g4. 
And if he takes after queen f6, queen c4, g takes, rook f6, rook g2, I have some chances. I have no chances, to be honest. But I thought I have some chances. And after rook g7, I realize after queen e6, I can just resign. <laughs> because after rook f7, knight f6 killed. Thank goodness I noticed this. It was a time trouble. So I simply had no choice. I had no choice but to repeat the position and end this absolutely hilarious game with a draw so i lost the count how many a double exclamation mark moves we had in this game and analysis i think it was about 30 30 or so 